Yo, what is up everyone? In today's video, I want to compare the KZ Linglong to the Moondrop variations, as well as give a review on the KZ Linglong. So, the reason I'm comparing it to Moondrop variations $520 IEM before you ask is because ultimately price does not matter, only sound quality does. And the KZ Linglong is not a replacement for the Moondrop variations, so... Side Salad Audio did a pretty good review on the KZ Linglong. He mentioned something I didn't consider before getting these is that it's not front vented, meaning that when you insert them, you can literally hear the driver crackling or something. It's very like strange and you get this overpressure, but I don't really think it matters that much. I think once you if you insert it like too deep you'll get like a popping sound where the overpressure is released but you lose bass by doing this so you kind of just have to deal a little bit with the overpressure and at that point you're able to listen to the earphone so how does it sound is what you must be asking i'm not doing an unboxing for this because i don't really think it's worth it for this one because the sound quality is going to be the selling point right firstly there is too much mud in this earphone there's no way to get around this. If you just listen to a really bassy track, for example, without any vocals, it'll sound fine, I guess, but anytime vocals come in, there's obvious congestion from this mud. Although there is sub-bass support, like, the mid-range is recessed at around 3.5 kilohertz, so vocals still aren't as forward as they are. And on Paul Wasabi's measurement, the 6 kilohertz region was boosted, which amplified the perception of vocal presence and it's just not there on my unit, unfortunately, so it's a bit of a trade-off because when I EQ'd to that, there was some plasticiness, which there even is here, don't get me wrong, but it sounded better there than it does here, and so I was originally recording a first impressions of this, and I changed my mind because there was some weirdness to this that I didn't really predict from my EQ. I, knew I, I know I made that community post, but maybe that was a bit too presumptuous. The treble resolution is audibly lacking on this compared to the Moondrop variations. Like, at around 8kHz, I can distinctly hear a slight dip in tone generator, and I'm getting a peak at around 12kHz. Not 11kHz on this, somewhat surprisingly, I don't know, but... Yeah, the peak I'm getting in my ear for this 14kHz resonance is going to be at around 12kHz. For me, I don't know how it will be for you. But, also, up to 20kHz, the extension is not enough. You can clearly hear it being much lower in level than the variations, so... The trouble resolution is really not up to par. Um, but the thing is, though, that video is kind of like in consideration that this is a $15 earphone, but there's no chance in hell I'd ever take this any day over the Moondrop variations, and neither should you because it's not even close to a top-of-the-line IEM. I mean, we clearly have too much mud, we clearly have poor trouble quality, upper trouble quality, but the thing is, like, in the most important regions, like 500 hertz to like 6 kilohertz or 500 hertz to 8 kilohertz. I don't know what the exact like super important regions are, but it does sound fairly natural and it is listenable. Now, the Quirks DSP does sound better than the KZ Linglong. The magnitude response is millions of times better on, better on these. This is like almost as good as Variations magnitude response. And as we know, magnitude response alone is like 90% of sound perception at least. Even though the phase response is worse on these, everything else is better than the KZ Linglong. And the noise floor obviously is a problem on these, so I don't know what I would use between these because, like, out of principle, I'd rather use a passive IEM, but if I was just listening to music and were to pick one in a blind test, it would definitely be the Quarks DSP because it does sound better than the KC Linglong. So let's pull up some song examples, I guess, and give you some impressions. Let's start with the song, which this really does well in, I guess, um, Sheila Kichawani. It's some famous Indian song. The instruments sound very natural overall. The drums impact are great. Like the sub bass presence on this earphone is excellent, but the thing is I can find songs which sound really good on the KZ Linglong overall, but there are also a lot of songs where it just does not sound that good. And the thing is I can pull up any song on the variations pretty much and it will sound excellent, but having to pick and choose songs for an earphone to sound good does not make it a good earphone. Like maybe it's passable i guess for 15 dollars but i don't know it is like a budget monster i guess in the sense that there really is not anything better for 15 dollars aside from the quirks dsp but this has other issues 
which passive earphones don't have. So that's another consideration. But for example, if I play um, Mr. Bikera, there's obviously like this thickness to the voice and the vocals and mid-range instruments don't shine as brightly as they're supposed to because the bloat in the lower mid-range is too great. And I guess that this 3.5 kilohertz region that's recessed in the magnitude response is also responsible for that. But the thing is, like, it still sounds very good overall. Like, I honestly, this is not an IEM I would really ever commit suicide by listening to, which I guess <laughs> says more than, like, honestly, you would have a hard time believing this maybe if you're new to this channel, but there are very few earphones which I could listen to for more than a week without committing suicide. And really, if I was to have the Moondrop variations taken away from me for like a year or something, I could tolerate this. Like obviously their life is not all about audio, but audio is important and this does do the job. Like I can listen to recordings and it does sound relatively natural and correct. And I can somewhat get used to it. But at the same time, when I have both the variations in the Ling Long, there's no reason for me to use the Ling Long because it does not compete with the variations. And I guess maybe as some comparisons, I would take this any day over the Critical Truth Era Zero and over the QKZ XHVB Con. It does have a more natural mid-range and it doesn't have as much plasticiness in the upper treble. It sounds more natural. Um, the bass doesn't sound as weird as it does on those IEMs, I guess, because they have a mud peak. Even though this is muddy, it kind of like embraces that it's muddy, so it still feels like it has more of a purpose than IEMs that are half-assedly doing it. Or half-assedly doing the Harmonish bass shell, if I guess, if you want to call it that. The KZ Linglong is a budget monster. I'd like to give a shout out to Zerus Ken, Castello4141, Ninjakama3, Vsauce4, Wade Yeager, Sinivri, Felix, Mild Bill, Christopher Yu, The RFO Reaper, Tripped, Munalos, Gabby D, Fofo, Tripped once again, and Base Gamer. Thank you guys a lot for supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. If anyone else wants to support, please be sure to join the Patreon, the YouTube membership, or the Discord membership.